Hi, so to wrap up with electric fields, we're just going to look at a few more graphs. And we're going to start with one that we've already looked at, which is the electric field strength for a, a point distance r from a charged particle or charged sphere. Of course, we could reduce the size of that charged particle all the way to a point charge. But here we go, I've got a charged particle down here, and it's got a certain diameter or radius, which I'm going to call big R. And we're going to say, OK, this charged particle has a charge of plus Q. So it's got a positive charge of plus Q. OK, well, that means, well, we already know the equation for the variation, because the equation for the variation of field strength um, we looked at already for a radial field is the charge, in this case plus Q, over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared. So we can hopefully draw that line. Do you want to pause and have a go? Hopefully you discovered uh, you got it right. And uh, I mean, if we just start at the surface, we need to start at the surface of the sphere. So I'm going to do a dotted line there. And I'm going to say, well, this sphere has a radius big R. So that's point big R. And it's, that's where we're going to start our graph, Be inside the sphere. I mean, it actually turns out that if it's a charged metal sphere, for example, a conducting sphere, there'll be no field inside. Uh, so the graph is actually going to have the following shape, as I hope you've already remembered, which is, get a decent colour, uh, which is uh, like a y equals 1 over x squared kind of graph, an inverse square law graph. So it's going to look something like this as it tails off as r gets bigger. So, uh, so what we're saying there, of course, is that at a distance r, at a point r metres from the centre of a charged particle q, then that's the graph that depicts how the electric field strength is going to look. Of course, we can actually put in the value um, of electric field at the surface of the sphere, because it will just be plus q over 4 pi epsilon naught big R squared. And as we go away, that's going to diminish. Good. OK, great. Well, what about then if we had a negatively charged particle instead, or metal sphere? Well, it's going to kind of be similar. But of course, if you have the field lines around a negative point charge or charged sphere, then we know that the field lines point inwards, the forces back towards the centre. So therefore, the force is in the opposite direction and is therefore going to be negative. So what I'm saying this time is that I'm going to call this minus Q. So this is a negatively charged sphere. And we're going to see what happens with the field strength this time. So there's E, this is R. Well, the equation's the same, of course. So it's Q, but of course, our charge is minus Q over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared. So it's just a negative version of the same graph. So it's good to know because sometimes it does crop up. There's a, you know, it's in an exam question. And if you haven't seen it before, you, you know, it's easy to not know what to do. So there we go. So we're going to have our curve this time is going to look just exactly the same, but in the opposite uh, quadrant, in the negative quadrant. And let's see if I can just do a better shape. Great. OK, so it's the same shape. It should be anyway. <laughs> OK, great. And, and also we know the value of electric field strength at the surface in exactly the same way as before is going to be Q minus Q over 4 pi epsilon naught big R squared. And that's big R, the radius, the radius of, the, of the sphere. Good. OK, well, also, we ought to just visit, then, uniform fields again. There's a uniform field I'm going to set up, and we're going to go for... We're going to put a potential difference across here. So let's put some positive voltage on the left-hand plate. So let's say, I don't know, 60 volts. Why not? And then zero on the right. So there's a potential difference between the plates. That means the field lines are going to point left to right. Well. What would the graph look like for the electric field between the plates? Well, again, have a pause and have a think if you're not sure. Hopefully, yeah, you've got an idea of what might happen there. Well, remember, the electric field strength is the force 
per unit charge. And I'm going to, I'll put here D, and we'll, because as, as the distance increases up to a value of, of maximum D, so in other words, because we know, don't we, that the gap, we usually call it D in this case rather than R, that's fine. So as we increase our distance from the left-hand plate, how does the electric field strength change? Well, hopefully you've remembered that because the lines are parallel, the force is the same everywhere. So the field strength is the same everywhere in this case. So basically, we, and we can actually calculate the field strength 60 over D. We don't know what D is. Um, so, but it means that the graph is going to be a simple um, horizontal line. Bang! Like, oh, I don't know why I've got arrows there. I should get rid of the arrows. There we are. So a nice horizontal line up to, from beginning to end. And that is zero distance from the left-hand plate. And that is at D meters from the left-hand plate. Good, so hopefully you remembered that one. But um, sometimes a question picks up on something else and they expect you to have some kind of idea in a uniform field what's going on with the potential, the voltage, as you cross that gap. And so I just wanted to spend the last little bit of the course talking about that. Well, we know that potential difference is work done per unit charge. So a volt is a joule per coulomb. And of course, if I'm at 60 volts, then I can say, well, the work done per coulomb to come to 60 from zero, to come through a potential difference of 60 volts, would be given, would be, um, would be 60 joules per coulomb. So, uh, so that's interesting because we can sort of imagine, a bit like we looked like in one of the very first videos, that if I were to bring a charge from the left-hand side plate from zero volts and move it across, well, the further I go, the more work I have to do. And once I get to the last, the, the left-hand side plate, well, I've had to do 60 joules per coulomb of work. So I'm going to need to do more depending on how far I go because I've got to get through more, uh, a, more repulsion. I've got to overcome, you know, this force. The force is acting against me all the time there. So that means that the, we can kind of deduce what the graph might look like. And I'm going to then therefore draw a graph of how the potential varies across the gap. How the, in other words, how many volts the particle would be at as it goes across the gap. And there's D there. Well, it's going to be, we know that if I take it all the way to the left-hand side of the, to the left-hand plate, then the particle is going to be at 60 volts because that plate is at 60 volts. So the voltage starts off at 60 on the left-hand side plate and then it has to end up at zero volts on the right-hand side plate. So if I sort of continue my dotted line down there, then I've got to go all the way down to zero volts. And, well, because it's a uniform field, you know, the further I go, the more work I have to do if I'm going against the grain. So therefore, I can put in a nice straight line, just straight down between the two, bang. And, well, you don't need to know much about that. But what you do need to be aware, though, is that it can help you predict the voltage at various points between the plates. Clearly, you can see that midway between the plates, there would be a potential of 30 volts. And so I could just indicate that by a blob here. And sometimes, as you'll see in the examples following this video, sometimes you have to have that awareness and um, just that it, the voltage varies uniformly as you move across the gap. Great, well that concludes um, the course in terms of theory. Um, have a go at the last few questions and just get in touch if you've got any questions and I hope to see you in the next unit.